what you want because you've looked for it before. And so they're just presenting you quickly with a very simple, it's over here, it's, you know, it's downtown, it's on sale today, right now, kind of thing, which is, there's not a lot of creativity in that. So I hope, I hope that answers. There's, there's, there's two parts to the answer, for sure. Up, up top. Yeah, I, I, I did a course at APIT on sustainable consumption, yeah. and one of the things that they talked about was the importance of the consumer to the company I think so. The, the distribution rights are with Film Option and Roll Films in the U.S. So if you um, if you can remember either of those names, or I don't know the, the best way to do it, the um, the production company is called Castlewood, and on that site you can communicate with uh, the exec team and then get the distribution details from them and then and then ask. Because I think there is an educational group. So we all try to sell it to TV people, but also schools and universities. So yeah, it should be doable. Castlewood, Castlewood Productions is where you want to go to start that. Please. So how is one to know, uh, how is one able to differentiate between this as, a, uh, as an informational documentary or this as a covert ad for ad block? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got it. I'm <laughs> actually working for ad block. I've been asked that before. I put forward ad block as one of the players in the conversation, not necessarily trying to position them as an answer to it. That's certainly their answer to it, but we tried to give Google and Facebook their say around that too. I mean, ad block has its own issues, as you probably are referring to. And there's a new for Adblock Plus, some of them actually get paid to do it, Adblock itself is free. Um, but I can tell you, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's, I, I think it's a cat and mouse game. I think it's, this is a snapshot of where we're at. Uh, but with each passing year, this is going to keep evolving. Um, and so, you know, my feeling about it is that uh, what might be effective, you know, this year, some people enjoy having their Adblock, some people don't. Uh, there will be new. There'll be new rules surrounding this, and new tools to either you know allow these inputs into your life or keep them out. And they'll be in price for doing that either way. So I don't think I don't. I, I hope that it didn't seem like it was an ad for ad block. It's not. Please in the middle. Uh, I was looking at this, and, and uh, it, what it was striking me with was uh, this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Did you do you have any sense of a connection then between this and how news is being presented? To I, I think back to the uh, the, the the protest, the, the River Rock protest last year. That yeah. the, that was going on for months before news media even you could find news media on it. You were getting Facebook posts. You're getting that. Yeah. And I, that's what I'm seeing now is more that these industries are controlling the news you're seeing. Yeah. So you're not respond. You're you're not even able to react. Because you're not getting the information, and you're trusting it. I think that the well, if, if, you know, we could, certainly we talk the U.S. election and the Russian ads on Facebook that are a source of big controversy right now. They, I think it tends to be like if, if you're a brand, let's say, if you're a you're you're going to get an established brand, you're going to get called out on these things because it is so transparent. Uh, you know, you you can tweet to the whole world about what you're seeing. So a news organization, they want to be in business for another 10 or 15 years, they're gonna have to uh, adapt to what people really do want or it will go away. Whereas, so see people that want to tamper with an election, slightly more into criminal, let's just say, whatever you wanna call that, I don't even know if it is illegal, what they were doing. But but that's where I would worry about it more. Not, not someone who's above the board, I am, you know, local CTV in Vancouver. I don't think, I think that they, their stakeholders wouldn't allow that over time. I personally don't think. But I think there's there's people out there that would, yeah, for sure. In the film, you mentioned that 99 of the top 100 websites are advertising supported. Wikipedia came to mind as the one that may not be directly ad supported. Mm -hmm. Making the film, did you come across any insights or models of ad-free supported? internet, website, like stuff in the future that's mm -hmm. not supported this way? Well, the alternative is subscription, right? And I think that, I think that 
that you hope that's the case. I mean, why I hope that's the case in our business, say Netflix is an example of that. Um, but people are slow to you know, pay for something that they can get more or less for free. And I think that you know, if people actually care about this stuff enough, at some point, they'll either demand more privacy or they'll actually be willing to pay for something that doesn't have these sort of uh, tracking scripts in them. So the models are there. The funny thing is, the curious thing is, is that you know people they they read about this kind of stuff or they hear about it. They go, yeah, that's bad, and then they just go right back on Facebook and give as much detail as they can. So I think I don't I think that's where we're at. The models are there. We just have chosen at the moment not to bother um, paying for something that must be structurally different. But yeah, you're right. Wikipedia is an example, but they're not making it's, it's I don't know how much money they make from that. It's free, I think. So. It's a tricky one. A last question here, please. Thank you. Um, I was very concerned about the transmission of data when one company goes on business and yeah. passes it to a successor. Yeah. But we heard famously a few years ago that the head of the NSA in America said, I want to intercept not some traffic, I want all traffic. Mm -hmm. Every cell phone, every landline call going through the NSA computers, computers. What did you find in making this film? about any connections between that data gathering and the sort of thing that was going on with anti-tax? None. I mean, I, I, didn't, I don't see a huge difference. And they do, you know, this Facebook, for example, keeps track of what you start writing and then delete. Um, so you ask, why are they doing that? I just, it, it's, it's all, I think they, you know, as, as the Eric Media guy said, some of this information is going to be used to track uh, your behavior and to try and prevent things like Las Vegas and so forth. But it's the same technology that is being used for commercial purposes. So I don't, I don't know if that answers the question, but I personally don't see a huge difference. It's just as much as they can, they'll get and store. Right. And it was really directed to, did you see any evidence that in fact, people like Facebook and the others who will, will be pressured by other authorities to transmit their data oh, to them? No. Sorry, yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, they, there's lots of things that they wouldn't tell us, by the way, uh, as you can imagine. You know, so they, they're, very, they're very guarded. And when you interview these guys, there's, you know, you're here and he's there, but there's about six other people here. And they, cha they change every question and a lot of the answers. So there, you get this sense that something weirdly sinister is going on. I think they're just hyper paranoid about their business model being exposed in some way. Yeah. Scott, thank you very much, and I'm going to go home and unplug my computer. <laughs> well, thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming out. Uh, please don't forget to vote. Your ballots are right outside.